Nearly seven years ago today, the UK news outlet The Guardian ran a headline that would change the entire discourse about climate change, about inequality, about plastic straws forever. It's probably become one of the most quote tweeted gotcha headlines of all time. The only problem is what? Does that even mean? I'm Hazel Fair, resident climate hypocrite and miserable buzzkill, and let's look into this together, shall we? You know her, you love her, she's the statistic that Just 100 companies are responsible for 71% of all the emissions that are heating up the planet, pushing us out of the tiny sliver of temperatures that allow humans to farm and have global commerce and not die. And then, and then, the scum-sucking elites that own them will turn around and blame us for our decadent lifestyles of eating groceries and driving to work. Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. But we know better. When our fragile blue marble is reduced to a sizzling, uninhabitable rock, at least we will know exactly who to blame. Let's look at these statistics a little closer. Who are these companies? Is that stat even true? Whose emissions are those anyway? So to understand this infamous statistic, we need to look at where it comes from. It comes from the Carbon Majors Report, which I read, you're welcome. The Carbon Majors Report was a report that differed in a few specific ways from other ways that we usually track emissions. The first way was that it covered only industrial emissions. Not that weird. What aren't industrial emissions? Non-industrial emissions would include stuff like land use, forestry, emissions from landfills, and from agriculture. So sorry to the guy who's really mad at Epicurious, um, but where's the beef? It's not in this report. So right off the bat, that means that we're actually only talking about 71% of 75% of emissions, which is, I'll let you get out your calculators, that's right, 52.54%. I knew you could get it. So of course, like by definition, they're gonna be because of big companies. So let's look at those companies. Number one, Saudi Aramco, the Saudi Arabian state oil company, which basically produces all of the oil that the country supplies to India, China, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines. Number two, the Russian state-owned oil company. Well, we found out a few years ago who Russia supplied oil and gas to. It was everybody. Number three, National Iranian Oil, aka Iran's oil supply. Are you starting to get it? These companies basically include the oil production and exports of entire countries. If you go down the list, that plus China's entire coal industry, a few private companies like Exxon, and well, it's all oil and fossil fuels. Always has been. You can already see why this headline is kind of misleading. If you say just 100 companies cause 71% of the emissions, anyone who isn't, you know, terminally climate-brained and gore-pilled would probably think of like Walmart, Amazon, who, you know, could reduce their emissions, but don't. But that headline would hit a lot different and a lot stupider. It said something like, most industrial emissions are created by oil companies. Yeah, dude, they're oil companies. That's like saying 100% of piss comes from the balls. Yeah, that's what they make. There's another little wrinkle that makes this entire report way different from other reports. Of course, we know that oil companies basically sell emissions. And while a lot of those emissions that oil companies create happen when they're dredging that oil out of the ground or whatever, most of the emissions that happen as the result of oil production is when we, you know, burn it. But, says Exxon, I'm just a little oil company. How am I supposed to know what you're going to do with my oil? I don't know. Maybe you'll use it as a centerpiece decoration or a face mask or a midnight snack. So usually, oil companies will only take responsibility for the emissions that they create when they are making the oil. Those are scope one emissions, which are covered by most reports. But the rest of oil's carbon footprint? They take a sort of whoever smelt it dealt it approach to. That is scope three emissions, the emissions that happen when the oil gets burned. Scope three measures the emissions that a product causes even after it's been shipped off and sold. What about scope two emissions? Nobody knows. But this carbon majors report is different. It includes scope three reports. It looks at the oil companies and says, hey gang, you know that people are gonna burn the oil that you make and you're responsible for those emissions too. So if I, a regular guy, buy a barrel of crude from BP and burn it in my backyard for fun, according to scope three, those are BP's emissions. And you know what I say? Fair enough. 
Oil companies will often respond to criticisms by being like, "Ah,、oh, gee whiz, guys, we're just making the planet fucking dino goo because you keep buying it." It's kind of like saying, "Oh man, I just sell laced meth in the back alley. If people want to inject it, it's not like I can stop them." Do people inject meth? Oil companies are not innocent bystanders. They're oil companies, and oil companies have spent their vast, unfathomable profits for decades. Preventing governments from taking any kind of climate action by funding lobbyists and vast disinformation campaigns, and buying off economists and politicians, and locking us into this fossil-fueled hellscape by lying, cheating, and bribing, just so they could sell us more oil. That they knew we were gonna burn. And by the way, if you just sat through an explanation of the difference between scope one and scope three emissions and didn't even get bored, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button because that shit. Was not easy to spice up, but the question remains: When a barrel of oil is burned, whose emissions are those? It's time to play. Whose emissions are those anyway? Well, if you trust oil companies, and I mean, I can't think of billions of reasons not to. They'll tell you who to blame. We need look no further than the carbon footprint. Even the very idea of a carbon footprint was invented by. That's right. A goddamn oil company. Now I know this might come as a shock to those of you who got internet access a couple hours ago. So now it makes a little bit more sense if you look at all those tweets referencing this hundred company statistic. It's usually in response to self-righteous New York yuppies writing articles sponsored by BP about how we can reduce our carbon footprints by driving less and taking shorter showers and eating less meat and replacing your light bulbs and watching Darren Woods' thumb-looking ass sleep with your wife. Maybe, just maybe, we can solve this whole climate change thing together. So we reply, "Hey, buddy, 100 companies are responsible for 71 percent of emissions. I'm gonna roll coal while eating beef in the shower with all the lights on, and there's nothing BP can do to stop me." But I have here the first book written referencing the carbon footprint, actually the ecological. Footprint. This book was written in the 90s by actual climate science people, and do you know how many pages it uses on telling you how to reduce your individual carbon footprint? Haha, like two pages. It uses more page space on its sexy footprint mascot. I mean, God, look how busty she is! Who we move over, sexy green M and M? Hello, Tucker Carlson. She's gonna make us all want to take cold showers, if you know what I mean. God, I've gotten so much comedic mileage out of this book. Anyway, point, point is, watching our carbon footprints and the oil companies that prop up the message that we're supposed to has managed to distract environmentalists from real solutions for decades. You know, systemic changes, regulations on big polluters, clean energy subsidies, transitioning to a green economy—the works. No, instead, concerned citizens were. Hoodwinked, bamboozled, even. We recycled. We did beach cleanups beside dying coral reefs. We only bought plastic packaging with the leaf on it. We brought our reusable totes to the grocery store that we drove to, and we told ourselves, "Good job, I'm fighting climate change." And this statistic, accurate or not, was one of the turning points that allowed us to finally say, "Hey, wait a second. This isn't my fault. This is your fault." So I ask again. Whose emissions are they? The oil companies aren't just burning oil for no reason. They're fueling the cars you drive, the polyester for your Shein hauls, and the food at your table. Another fact that is equally true to this one is that household consumption accounts for 60% of total emissions. That's also the majority of emissions. I guess the other 40% is probably Taylor's jet. And another stat that people like to throw around is that over half of emissions come from the top 10% of income earners. You know, it's those rich people in their private jets, not me in my F-150. But the threshold for that is about 60,000 U.S. dollars a year, or about 30 an hour. That's below the median income in the U.S.A. If you live in a rich country and you're not flat broke, well, sorry, those aren't oil companies' emissions, and they're not your emissions. They're our emissions. See, there's a secret third option: the big polluters and their advertisers and their decrepit, undead politician cronies don't want you to know about. Now, the answer isn't to just accept zero blame because the system's rigged. And what's the boy to do? The answer isn't guilt or shame or self-flagellation, unless you're into that kind of thing. 
The answer is to look around at the emissions you happen to be causing and maybe ask yourself why. You probably drive a car because it's not safe to bike in your city and the buses suck. That doesn't mean you have to risk your ass biking down the freeway to work just to be an environmentalist. Cities all around the world are getting more transit and bike oriented because people are pushing their governments for it. I live in one of them and it's a genuine pleasure to not have to deal with having a car. Or I rent an apartment so I can't control where my power comes from but I can petition my landlord or utilities to switch to cleaner energy or email my city councilor. Seriously, those guys never get emails. They're gonna read your emails. You get it. If you live in a rich country, you're probably a big polluter, but it's not your fault. That means you have an opportunity and a responsibility to do something about it for the rest of the world that has basically no carbon footprint to cut in the first place. There's advocacy groups that need you. There's environmentalist local politicians who need you. There's communities and friends and neighbors who need you. And also probably wouldn't kill you to eat less meat. You're a grown ass adult. You don't have to have chicken nuggies for every single meal. You'll be amazed what they can do with beans these days. Your carbon footprint doesn't matter, but your actions do. And just remember 80% of statistics are made up bullshit, especially this one. I've been Hazel. I'm sweaty as hell out here and I'm about to go have an hour long shower and not even feel bad about it. Like and subscribe.